It is unbelievable that the RCMP had awarded a contract for sensitive telecommunications equipment to a company that was in part owned by the Chinese government and that was facing charges in the United States related to espionage. How on earth did this happen? People are asking. Now, the sort of kind of good news is that the federal government has stepped in. They've called the timeout on this contract. They're looking into it and they're looking into a whole bunch of other contracts. National Defense is now saying, we gotta see if this sort of thing is going on in other places in the government. So I, I guess that's good. But why I call it sort of kind of good news is, well, this is only happening because this contract was talked about in the media and it's become a bit of a scandal. And also, how are we doing this right now in, in the fall of 2022, where these contracts were only recently signed? This contract was signed in October 2021. I think the answer to it is because until not too long ago, this sort of thing was normal. Now, I remember saying several years ago that we need to pretty much flat out ban state-owned enterprises from being able to bid on government contracts in Canada, Chinese state-owned enterprises. And a lot of people felt that was, was a step too far. Maybe we can get to the point where we can ban uh, state-owned enterprises from bidding on, on very sort of secret things related to uh, the military, related to state secrets, and which this one would fall under the RCMP contract. Now, I think we're more than willing to talk about just flat out banning Chinese state-owned enterprises from having anything to do with our government contracts. But it's, it's interesting, and I'm glad that the conversation is at the point where, of course, people would say, yes, we should do that. But a couple years ago, a lot of parliamentarians felt like, no, we can't possibly do that. What happened? Well, we have heard recently from figures in Washington connected to the White House and the Biden administration that they are now applauding the Trudeau liberal government for saying it's time to decouple from China, that we are echoing things that they have been saying. But we've also heard from some representatives with the Biden administration that they flat out admit that they were worried that Canada was not going to get on the right page and wasn't going to get on the same page with them. And they were giving us some prodding, which is, I think, why we've seen in the past few months a number of cabinet ministers, Christia Freeland, Melanie Jolie, Francois-Philippe Champagne, all talk about the need for a decoupling from China. Look, I'm, I'm happy to say that when they've done something right, I acknowledge it, and they're doing something right in this direction. But it's interesting, they're all doing it right now, all at the same time, because Washington's told them, get with the program. The Biden administration's had to say, you guys got to go ahead with this decoupling, which was, I think, most aggressively started by the Trump administration. Biden has picked up on a lot of aspects of it. The U.S. is, is clearly just seen that's the direction they have to go in. So how was this contract signed in the first place with a, a partially Chinese state-owned operation getting a sensitive contract with the RCMP? Because that's how we used to roll. That was the default position, that we accepted that as normal. We normalized that sort of thing. But it wasn't normal. It shouldn't have been allowed to happen. Thankfully, we're drifting away from all of that. But I can't believe it took all of this to make that happen.